Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be covering um, kind of just a process video of how I'm going to aim to recreate this image on the right. I kind of already started messing around with it on the left here. Um, again, this is very early stages, so let's just go ahead and hop right into it. How did I do this? How did I get to this point? How did I achieve these textures? I'm going to show you guys everything. Let's go ahead and just open up a completely brand new file and I'll show you guys how we did this. So file new general, go ahead and save this. Very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the cube and the light. I'm going to add in a plane and I'm going to go ahead and tab into edit mode, right click, subdivide, and we're just going to literally subdivide this 100 times. And I'll explain why in a second. Go ahead and add a displacement modifier to that. New displacement. And we're going to select an image and I'm going to go to my downloads folder. I found this awesome image of a leaf texture. I'm going to go ahead and show you what this is going to do. So you're going to double click on that and you'll be like, whoa, Kenny, that looks horrible. It doesn't look like a leaf at all. Calm down. We're going to go ahead and first of all, lower that strength a little bit. I'm going to go to my top down view so you can really see. See how this is starting to come together. Right click, shade auto smooth, tab into edit mode, subdivide again. And as you can see, this leaf texture is actually starting to come through. Add a subdivision modifier to that. And again, we're going to lower our value just a little bit. And I'm going to subdivide this one more time. Your computer might explode if you do this. I'm just giving you the warning now, but the results are looking awesome. I'm going to go ahead and save this before Blender crashes. And as you guys can see, we have this really nice leaf texture. Now the higher quality image that you have, the better this displacement is going to come out. I'm going to lower this value a little bit. Something like that might work. I think, where are we at? We're at 0 0.02, I might try 0 0.01, just the ever so slightest look to this. This is perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and tab into edit mode one more time, subdivide, and I think Blender's gonna crash, but let's see. Looks fine to me. I'm gonna go ahead and apply my displacement, and I'm gonna apply my subdivision modifier. I almost clicked on duplicate and Blender almost exploded. Now we have this incredible leaf texture with zero effort. Let's go ahead and add a simple deform to this. And for our simple deform, I'm going to use twist. And I think this looks perfect. What we want is something that kind of resembles a leaf. Now again, I'm going to go ahead and take my camera and I'm just going to move it into place here. I'm going to go ahead and snap to my camera view and I'm going to just rotate the camera up so that we're actually like facing our scene here. I'm going to give myself a hundred millimeter lens because that is realistically what we would have with something like this. All right. So now that we have this texture set up, let's just go ahead and add some simple lighting and cycles and we'll get into the real nitty gritty stuff. Add an environment texture and then HDRIs. I'm going to choose an outdoor scene. This forest scene will probably be perfect. Go to your rendered view and this is what we'll have so far. So we don't really have any texture set up, but I'm going to go ahead and just add a green texture to our leaf so that we can actually see what the heck's going on here. I'll choose a darker green color with a high metallic value and a lower roughness. Now, right away, it's not gonna look perfect, but one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first of all enable depth of field. I'm gonna go ahead and select my leaf. And as you can see, we kind of have this nice depth of field effect Then I'm gonna actually adjust manually. So I'm gonna adjust this manually so that we're kind of focused on just very specific part of this. I'm gonna head over to the shading tab now, it's not going to look great yet because we have to set up some good lighting, but I'm going to go to my world settings, add in a texture coordinate, add in some mapping, and we're going to kind of adjust this actual mapping of the world here. So guys, with those nodes set up, go ahead and just click and drag that Z value. Find some lighting that looks really good. I personally think it looks good when the lighting is kind of coming from behind the leaf. So I'm kind of looking for an angle that looks good for that. That might be perfect right there. That's pretty good. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm also going to rotate my leaf around a little bit as well to kind of get the angle that I'm looking for. Now we don't have to match that render exactly, but I kind of want to get as close as I possibly can to it. So I'm going to just keep adjusting this as needed. I think that might be perfect. And then with our depth of field, we're going to add some more texture to this, but with our depth of field, I think this is looking fantastic. Something like that might be just about perfect. Okay, good. So we're kind of set up for what we need. Um, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this reference again. Um, it looks kind of like there's a very bright light source coming from behind. So what I might do is I might kind of tilt my camera down a little bit more. 
and create that bright light source. So in order to do that, I am going to pull up a new tab on Chrome. I'm just going to go to pexels.com and we're going to go ahead and search for a forest. And I'm going to take an image of a forest. Did I spell forest wrong? Yes, I did. Fantastic. I'm going to take an image of a forest that I really like and I'm going to apply it to an emission shader. I really like this image here. Uh, that might work. Hold on, let me just. Okay, this one's good. We'll, we'll use this one right here. Go ahead and download that image. Go ahead to your viewport. Go back to layout so we can kind of get a bigger view here. And then go ahead and add in a mesh, or sorry, image as planes. Go to your downloads and then we're going to select that image. Cool. So we have that image right there. Go to your top down view, rotate that image and scale it up, and then bring it to the background of your scene. Now, it's not going to look like much right away. I'm going to scale it up even more. Cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it really far into the background here, somewhere like right there possibly. And then we're going to give this an emission shader. So I'm going to go over to Shading tab. I am going to go to my object. And instead of a principal BSDF, we're going to delete that and add in an emission shader. Color into the color and emission into the surface. And then for the strength, we're going to do 10. And we're going to go ahead and hop back into rendered view. I'm going to narrow in on my subject here like this. And as you guys can see, we have this nice blurred background. And I think it looks really good. We'll adjust it more as we go. Because um, knowing me, I'll probably have more to adjust. Yep. And also, make sure you kind of lower this into the scene in a way that makes sense. I think that looks pretty good there. Try to make it makes sense that looks pretty good cool again you guys can adjust the strength of this I might even do 15 it kind of blows out the image a little bit but what's great is we'll be able to do some real-time compositing here so this is gonna look really cool in a second go to your camera adjust your depth of field a little bit more I want this depth of field to kind of be centered on our leaf here now let's go ahead and add some more texture to this so I went ahead and downloaded make sure I'm still recording here yep I went ahead and downloaded this texture here which is this nice leather texture. So I'm actually gonna plug this leather texture into the leaf because if you look really closely at our reference image and you zoom in, you notice it does kind of look like a leather texture. So I wanna emulate that very easily using this black and white image of leather. So go to your shading tab with your leaf selected. And right now we just have a principal BSDF, so nothing crazy going on here. Go ahead and add an image texture, add in a mapping node, add in a um, texture coordinate. Sorry, my brain froze. And go ahead and plug everything in like this. Go ahead and locate that image, which will be right in our downloads. And then go ahead and add in a bump node. Plug in the color of the image into your height and then the normal into the normal. And right away, you're going to see a difference and it looks really good. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to scale this up or down depending on what we're looking for. In my case, I think seven was the perfect scale. Was it seven or let's try five? Now, beware of this repeating image effect. If you guys are getting that, um, we're gonna have to modify this a little bit more. That doesn't look terrible. Um, you can also add in a texture. Oops, I'm sorry. Texture after your image. So you're going to have to play with this value. Right now, I don't think it looks terrible. If you really zoom in, you can really, really see the texture coming through here. Um, and you should be able to fine tune it from there. I think I'm going to try two. Now, with the actual size of the image, you could probably go for something different. But right now, it's starting to look really good. And I'm going to adjust this roughness value of the leaf as well. Cool, and I'm gonna go and look at my, I'm just gonna constantly be looking at this, this reference image to see can, kind of what we've been missing here, what we, what we could improve here. One of the things I'm gonna do is go ahead and enable compositing in the, um, right here. And I'm going to go ahead and select my viewport down here. I'm gonna snap to my camera, go to rendered view, and I'm gonna enable my real-time compositing in the camera. I'm just gonna add in a hue and saturation node and I'm gonna pop that between the rendered layer and the composite. And then I'm actually going to split these windows here. So I'm gonna add this window here and this window right here so I can like really see what's going on. Let me just move my face so you guys can really see. Cool. 
Um, so yeah, so we have our window right here. I'm gonna try to match this hue as closely as possible. Sorry for the people on the live. I know it's kind of hard to see, but I'm just gonna adjust the hue. That looks a lot better. Raise that saturation. I'm also gonna add an exposure node and pop that right after the hue and saturation. And I'm just gonna raise that value just a little bit. Again, I'm trying to match the right image as closely as possible. Um, it's not gonna be perfect by any means, uh, but we're also gonna go ahead and back to our layout tab now that we have that all set up. And we are going to further try to match this image. Um, get rid of that, get rid of that, there we go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just pop out this tab to kind of lower my camera into the scene a little bit more. And I think I'm gonna choose 120 millimeter lens and maybe go for something like that. I think that looks pretty good. And then for our background plane, again, I'm gonna go ahead and raise that exposure even more because I want it to be very much like flooding the scene with light. All right, so now I think we're getting closer to where we can actually start adding in some of our water droplets. But before we do that, I actually wanna scale this down. Actually, I wanna scale it up and I wanna rotate it more like this way. And I think I'm gonna raise that roughness value a little bit too. There's really a lot going on here with what we can <laughs> what we can do. The actual color itself could probably be a little bit brighter as well. There we go. That's definitely getting closer to what I was what I was looking for here. And then also rotating the actual. Ugh, you can you can you can really get into like the actual dynamics of how this is all rotated. But I think it's looking pretty good. You know what I was thinking, guys? We could add a displacement to this. I don't know if this is gonna look good or not. Before we add our water droplets in, let's just see, solid mode. Right now, like, everything looks good, but it, honestly, we could probably add one more displacement in to kind of raise these ridges. I wonder if we add a, if, it, if we add a solidify, what this would do. Might crash Blender, let's just see what happens. Let me just add, let's do one for the other side. Yeah, come through on the other side. I'm wondering if it looks more rigid now. I'm trying to get that texture to really pop, like that texture of that leaf. Oof, that doesn't look too good. Or does it? Let me turn this off in the viewport. That doesn't look terrible. I might go with that for a second and just experiment with how this could look. Now, one of the things I'm going to enable too, guys, is I think I'm gonna enable, um, caustics on this there we go cool camera cameras nice and in there hold on I'm gonna zoom in even more there's a lot of texture going on here I probably I don't know if the solidify modifier hurt this or not but I think it's looking pretty good so far again this a lot of this blender stuff is going to be like a big experiment basically all right let's actually go ahead and add more to the scene so let's start adding in our water droplets so the very first thing i'm going to do is just add in a sphere we're going to go ahead and scale that sphere down and we're going to bring it right above our surface here and we're just going to go ahead and subdivide it i'm just going to go ahead and apply that shade that smooth and we're gonna give this thing a glass shader. 1.33 for the IOR, which is the IOR of water, and then lower that roughness. So already this is looking really cool, and this definitely looks like a water droplet. Let's go ahead and split our view again so we can see our reference. So our reference is on the right. Now the goal is to have these water droplets looking like they're kind of like on the leaf. So I'm gonna kind of keep that reference up as we go. I'm gonna to try to make sure my viewers on Instagram can kind of see this as we go. Can you guys see that okay? I think you can see it like pretty good. Again, I'll, I'll try to make Blender bigger so you guys can really see it. Cool. All right, so we really have some nice caustic effects. So I'm just gonna enable caustics up front, go to the shading tab, cast shadow caustics, and then click on our um, leaf receive shadow caustics. And Blender's gonna go ahead and freeze on us. Now, I think the reason Blender, Blender's having a hard time right now because there's really a lot going on in our scene. I don't know if the caustics are working right away, but already this looks really cool. And I think our lighting matches pretty well. I'm actually gonna really quickly before I do this, guys, I'm gonna go over to the shading tab. I'm gonna go ahead into my world settings and I'm actually just gonna zoom out so I can see my nodes. And I am going to adjust our lighting a little bit more so that it's 
a little darker on this side so that the light is very clearly shining through from that side. Hold on. I feel like that's pretty pretty accurate to what it should be. And also, guys, strength of the background. I'm going to turn that down to 0.4. There we go. Now we really have... Let's, let's try 0 0.8. 0 0.8. That looks good. Cool. So now we really have something that looks good. And then if you guys notice on these water droplets, there's this little rim of light. I'm going to fake that with an area light real quick. I'm just going to go ahead and add in an area light into our scene. Uh, Blender is going very slow right now because I am recording on OBS at 4K. Just go ahead and add in a light source, area light. I'm going to go ahead into solid view. I'm going to scale this down, bring it like over here. I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to make it into a rectangle. I'm going to scale it really thin like that, right? Like really thin. And hopefully this will give us a nice rim light effect. Power, we'll do a thousand. We'll go to rendered view. And we're going to pop to the camera here. And we're going to see. So we have that rim light. We're just going to need to adjust the actual positioning of the, the area light itself. I'm going to go ahead and lower that on the z-axis. I'm also going to scale it up more. I think I'm going to bring it. I'm going to go over to the animation tab. And this is going to give us a very easy way to look at the way our light is affecting our scene. So we can move it in real time on our top-down view here. There we go. Now we can really see how it's going to affect our scene. There we go. Perfect. All right, and then I'm going to lower that to like, I don't know, 200. And it'll it, as you guys can see, we have that light shining right here on the rim. I'm trying to make this work as best as possible. Make it thin but still like noticeable. Look at how that drastically affects our scene. Incredible. Um, I think 100 might be a good value. We can come back to that. Again, you would not see this in nature. So if you're going for realism, this definitely isn't the way to do it. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just focus on that water drop there. Cool. All right, let's actually start making this water drop look like it's, well, a water drop. Um, I'm going to go into sculpting mode and hopefully Blender doesn't crash when I do this. But this is already looking really good. I'm going to go ahead and select our sphere. Go over to sculpting, and I'm going to try to match what we see over there on the right hand side. So, in order to do this, I'm probably just going to use a couple of different tools. One of them is the elastic deform, which basically just allows you to kind of adjust this as needed. And it does look pretty good. So, I'm just going to go to the top down view. I'm going to kind of stretch this out as if it's running like down. So, this will be the elevation. So, it would kind of be running from this direction, and it would be coming this way like that cool and then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of push everything upwards too so it's above the surface very good and i just want it to look like it's kind of rolling off so i'm going to take my inflate tool and i'm just going to inflate this side a little bit kind of like that now again this is going to be kind of an experiment but i'm going to try to make this look like it's rolling off of the leaf Not bad. We're going to be able to smooth this out as we go. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my elastic deform and kind of press down on this side like that. Extend this out. And yeah, that's starting to look really, really good. And then we can kind of take these sides and kind of drag them more towards the surface. Again, you're going to have some stuff coming through the surface here. But you want this to look like it's kind of like beating off of the the surface if that makes sense like it's I don't know if I'm explaining that correctly but it's kind of like barely touching the surface but it still is it's like this it's almost like you can kind of tell that there's surface tension it's starting to look pretty decent very good all right let's just go ahead and check the rendered view and see how this looks okay not bad um, and it looks like it really is touching it's coming through the the surface there so I think we're gonna need to actually adjust it even more um, so far I'm pretty happy with the way it's turning out I think the bottom though is gonna need to really like actually touch the surface just a little bit yep just like that this side as well again this thing is supposed to look like it's kind of like spreading out 
I think that's pretty decent. It's not going to be perfect by any means, so I'm going to probably go with that. And we're going to duplicate that a bunch of times and kind of roll with that concept right there. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is raise my light paths up. So hopefully everything looks a little bit better. I'm just going to put everything at 40. Total of 40. There we go. Um, this is starting to look really, really good. One of the things to consider is I think this was shot in a studio. And if we zoom in on this, you can kind of see the way that it refracts everything. We might need to work on our texture a little bit because right now our texture is looking a little bit strange with that that image. Um, but I, I do think it looks good, but I think we're going to need to definitely adjust it because right now this is like reflecting in a very strange way. I'm going to go to solid view and I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to put it down here, scale it down, bring it down on the Z axis. And I'm going to stretch it out on the Y, I think. Rotate it a bit. Let's see how that looks. Cool. So we have a few of them kind of sitting there. And we're going to continue to just duplicate these and stretch them as needed. I'm going to put a couple in the background here. These ones are going to be a little bit smaller here. Cool. I'm just rotating these. I'm, guys, I'm basically taking that same shape, rotating it, and trying to get it to be positioned in a way that looks kind of good. Again, I'm, I'm going to also be following like the contours of the leaf. That might be good. Something like that. Yeah, that looks good. Perfect. And I'm just positioning these in a way that I think might look good. Um, now for this next one here, I think I'm going to scale it on the X a lot. I'm going to rotate it completely around. Very good. Let's just go ahead and take a look at this composition here. Cool. And we'll need some up here as well. This is kind of a process, guys, of like placing these, but I think it's going to look good. The end result, I think, is going to look good. Yep, so far so good. Let's get one in the front, like a little bit of a bigger one in the front. All right, what do you guys think? Should we check out the rendered view now? Let's just let's see what we got so far. Let's see what we got. Not bad. I'm definitely not getting the lighting result that I want here, so I think I'm gonna have to mess with my camera angle and my actual background. Like, let's see, background strength. Again, I do think this was shot in a studio, so I think we're not gonna get the result that they got if we don't. Well, I guess, like I said, we could just go ahead and keep messing with this. Their f-stop is really, really low. There we go. That looks a little bit better. I guess their f-stop being low makes me want to just set ours really low too. And I think the background will blur more with the water drops as we go. Um, one of the things I'm going to do is go back to this area light. And I think I'm going to bump up the value to 500. And then I'm going to go to my um, my compositing, and I'm going to lower that exposure, actually, guys, because that exposure is way too bright right now. And I'm going to have to adjust the hue as well. Saturation, I'll bring that down just a little bit. Is there a contrast node? Let me see. Contrast. Yep, brightness contrast. I'll bump the contrast up just a little bit. And again, exposure... Bring that down a little bit as well. That's looking really, really nice. Cool. All right, I'm getting very happy with this. Now, the area light. I'm going to go ahead and enable caustics on here and see what that does to our scene. Should do something to our scene. It is 
currently loading the render kernels, which means that it's um it's basically means it's struggling. <laughs> Give that a quick second to figure itself out. Yeah, it is. It's basically frozen at this point. Um, we're asking it to do a lot, and there's a lot of textures going on here too. Um, so, and I think we're gonna have to adjust some roughness values of this leaf. But I'm very happy with the way everything is turning out. Like, I think this is like a really cool little scene. Um, again, getting it to match exactly in Blender will be kind of a trick. It's really about the lighting. If you guys really look at that reference image on the right, the lighting is kind of everything. Uh, Blender is currently, I think, basically frozen. So I might have to stop recording soon, but let's see if we can go back to the layout tab. Yeah, Blender, Blender's not very happy with me right now. Um, and I think it's because I enabled Shadow Caustics. Yeah, it's gonna freeze on us. Okay, I'm gonna have to force quit Blender. Now I did save, so we should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and X out of these other images too. All right, we're gonna go back into Blender. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We are not going to use Shadow Caustics on the area light, but we are gonna mess with our material more. So let me go back to the shading tab. I'm gonna go to my leaf material. I think I'm gonna disable my um, my solidify modifier. I think it's hurting more than it's helping, and I think it's slowing Blender down significantly. Cool, I'm also gonna enable camera compositing. Cool, and I'm gonna go over to my object settings. And then I'm gonna raise the roughness of the leaf a little bit. I think the roughness was definitely messing with the way everything was looking. Very good. Okay, cool. This is starting to look really, really good. I don't know if you guys are enjoying this tutorial or not, but I definitely am having a good time putting this together. I think overall it looks fantastic. It's definitely not perfect by any means, but if you look at the reference image, like it's pretty close. Um, again, getting that giant like ring light look on that water drop is it's just a matter of setting up that area light properly. And then that like the way that everything looks right now is because I do think this was shot in a studio. I'm pretty positive that it was. Let me go back to my layout tab. Let me just go ahead and take a look at everything here too. I think I might scale, I might scale this whole thing on the Y to get like more dimension out of it, if that makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and check this out. And I'm gonna have to just replace my water drops. You know what I'm gonna do actually? Just take a look at this. This has a lot of texture to it. I'm gonna enable my compositing again. You know what it is? It's totally the bump node that's throwing everything off. Let me go ahead and explore that a little bit more. Maybe it's just the strength is too high. This is the strength at zero. This is the strength a little bit higher. That doesn't look terrible. Does this look like a leaf? I can't even really tell anymore. The more I look at this, like the more I think about it and then it and then it messes with my perception of does this look good or not? Which I think it does. I do think it looks good, but again, I could spend literally all day trying to get this to be perfect. I feel like it's a little bit too too metallic-y. So I'm gonna raise that roughness value. That looks a little bit better. It really is just a matter of messing with those fine details. That's one to one scale for our texture. Man, is this crazy. It's crazy because there's just so many little details you have to get right to make this look decent. Um, even like the placement of the actual water drop. Oh, that looks a lot better. Because now you can kind of see inside of this water drop and it's refracting really nicely. So I might just raise this up just a little bit. 
That's good. Uh, where's our area light at? I'm afraid. I really want there to be shadow caustics, but I'm also afraid it's going to mess everything up. Should I just try and enable it? I'm going to save this and enable it real quick and see if it works. Um, loading render kernels. All right, should we just give it a quick second and see if it works? Again, it might work, guys. It might look... The, the actual caustics, I think, could really take this to the next level. But my, my blender does not like what I'm doing right now. And it's probably because the leaf itself has like a million vertices. Um, but yeah. I mean, we're on a macro lens with a really strong looking depth of field. Um, I do think caustics is about to break this whole thing. So why don't I... I just, I'm just not going to wait for it because I think it's going to take way too long and it's going to make me cut into the tutorial too much. So what I'm going to do is add a few more water droplets um, and I'm going to, I'm going to shape them a little bit differently. There we go. Yeah, so this one, okay, so I think I'm going to just make a new one out of a sphere. I'm just going to copy that material, shade smooth, and I'm going to rotate it a little bit. There we go. I'm trying to kind of place it in the background here. Yeah, like really far back there. Let's see what that looks like. Because I want there to be a few more uniform drops, but not too many, you know what I mean? So let's go ahead and duplicate that, scale it down. See if that hurts or helps. I think it helps a little bit. Yeah, I think it, I think it definitely helps. I think I want to have one more right here what do you guys think so far I mean I think it looks I think it looks pretty good overall. I mean, for, for just like setting it up within like an hour, I mean, we haven't spent too much time on it, but I do think it looks, I think it looks pretty good. You could really go ahead and mess with the water droplets as much as you want. Um, in terms of like the lighting and stuff, I do think we can also take this background plane and we can move it however we want to adjust the lighting. You see that as I move this, it completely changes the way everything looks. Look at that. If I move it completely down, completely different. If I move it up, I think that that right there is not terrible. Maybe that. It, it's crazy. It's crazy how how much it's going to change the entire scene. Um, now the actual, let's see, the actual leaf itself. I could probably make it a little bit darker or lighter. I don't want to make it too light right now. To be honest, it probably should be a little bit less saturated anyway. And then let's go to our compositing tab and let's just see how this is looking. Now we do have a, a real time compositing enabled. It's interesting, the exposure itself, where's the saturation? There's saturation, the hue, so many things to think about. Oh, you know what we could add? We could add some lens distortion. It's gonna really mess with, like you don't wanna make it too much, but if you just do slightly subtly, it's, it might look pretty good. Just joining, what software is this? This is Blender. And it's looking it's looking pretty good. I think overall I'm pretty happy with it. Um, this this as you can see the lens distortion might be a little bit much for the scene, but let's see. I mean, as you guys can see, it's not looking that bad. I'm not really entirely happy with this water drop right here. Might bring it up just a little bit. Oh, there we go. That's kind of what I was looking for. Just that subtle kind of, ooh, there we go. That might be it. You know what I want to do to this, though, in sculpting mode? I want to just bring this edge down. 
little bit more. Make it look like it's really like beating off, if that makes sense, guys. I don't know if that makes any sense to you. Again, you can adjust all of these as needed. But let's go back to the layout tab and let's see what that looks like. I, I definitely think that looks a little bit better. Like it's kind of like dripping down, like it's coming down this way. Yeah, I, I definitely am very, very happy with the way this turned out. Again, this is like a very basic version of like what I was going for. I think if I really wanted to, I could probably spend six, seven hours on this trying to perfect it, trying to add little insects or little particles. Um, let me just go ahead and take a look at that reference one more time. Theirs just looks so, I mean, theirs looks so good. Sorry, the people on the live can't see. This is the reference I'm going off of right here. And then this is the one that I've been working on. It's really hard to get that vibrant look on the bottom. And I think it's because of the way they set up the studio lights when they photo, I'm assuming that this was shot in the studio. Um, and you have these water droplets really reflecting the, the surface. Again, it's probably the angle two of the camera. I could probably get a different angle that would then like magnify all of these different things. Hmm. I'm looking right now to see what we can do here to make this even cooler. But I do think I do think this looks really cool, especially with like a macro lens. I think this is looking very, very good. A lot of people are commenting on the PC. Scared to do modeling in PC. Yeah, I know, it's a little bit scary. Um, I'm trying to think, you know what we could add to this? Maybe little, little tiny fibers. Maybe a little particle system with the tiniest little fibers on this. Let's try it and just hope that Blender doesn't crash. If I was to tab into edit mode right now, I can guarantee you Blender would crash. Um, let me try to add a particle system. I'm, I'm really curious if this is gonna work. If I click on hair right now, okay, so it is working. Let's go ahead and adjust that hair length. Oh my God, Blender is like, freaking out right now. Let's do 0.1 for that hair length. There we go. All right, let's do 0 0.02. Good, okay, so now we have little tiny fibers all over here. Let me go ahead and add a new material and call this, uh, I'm just gonna call this one plant fibers and we're just gonna go ahead and add some slight plant fibers to this. All right, we're gonna go over to the shading tab and we are going to hope that Blender doesn't crash. Wow, okay, so right now we have our little fibers, which is great. We're gonna adjust all these settings though. So in my plant fibers um, material, I'm gonna delete the principal BSDF. I'm gonna add in a hair, a principled hair BSDF. And I'm gonna plug it in and I'm gonna make it um, a green, like a lighter green for now, just to make sure we can see it. I'm gonna go to my particle settings, go to viewport display, and I'm gonna do, oh wait, sorry, render, and we're gonna do plant fibers for the material. And that's gonna go ahead and swap out our material. Now it looks a lot better. And as you can see, these are already looking really good, but we actually want them to look more like hair. So I'm gonna to go to children, click on interpolated, and that should help with the, with the rendering time as well. Very nice. And we're gonna do five for the display amount. And then for the Oh my gosh, my computer is going so slow right now. Um, it's freak, my computer is literally like, wants to kill itself. All right, uh, let's go to root and tip and do uh, 0.2 for both of those. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to have much thinner fibers that are still visible to the render. But yeah, so now we have much thinner fibers as you guys can see. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and lower that, that um, distortion amount. Where is our compositor? Compositor. Here it is. I'm gonna lower this distortion amount a lot. How about, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and lower this to 0 0.02. There we go, that's much better. And we're also gonna lower our count on our fibers. Right now it's 1,000, let's do like 500. Give that a second to update. This is looking pretty good. The only thing left is maybe just adjust the actual length of the hair. 0 0.01 seems to be like something that we could go for here. Good, again, we have these fibers. I think I'm gonna do an even shorter length, 0 0.01, so 0 0.005, we'll do half of what we had before. Go ahead and give that a second to update. And if we really zoom in here, you can see the fibers right below this water drop. They're very subtle, but I think I think this is kind of what this render needed a little bit. I might jump this number up to 
2000 and hope that Blender doesn't crash. Let's just let's see what it looks like. Not bad. I'm gonna make make those uh, make the hair length smaller. 0 0.002. Again, guys, the other thing to consider is this is not to scale at all. So keep that in mind. I mean, that looks pretty good. It's it's really, really subtle. Like you can barely tell that this thing has fibers. I might do 5,000 and see what that looks like. Yeah, they're on there. Let's, let's give them a little bit more length. Let's give them a little bit more length here. All right, that looks good. I think. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Like I said, I could spend all day on this. If you really zoom in over here, you can kind of see it's coming out really nicely. So if you really zoom in, you can see the little fibers. And they look pretty good. I mean, overall, like, I could spend, like I said, guys, I could literally spend all day on this render. But at the end of the day, I got other things I got going on too, so. This looks pretty good. Um, again, you could spend all day on this and you could get it exactly perfect the way you want it. You could try to match the background to an exact background. You could literally look up different um, types of water drops. You could do research on water drops all day and figure out how to make them look very realistic. Um, if I turn this area light off, this is what we get right here. So again, this was shot in the studio. If I go to my reference real quick, I can guarantee you that this image on the right was shot in the studio. You don't get light like this in real life, you don't. It just doesn't exist. Um, the sun doesn't do that. Um, the only way you could possibly, possibly ever get a light source like that that's actually natural is if your plant was inside and your plant had water drops on it and maybe it was shining through a window and it, and it kind of gave you that rectangular light source. But again, this is like more of a natural setting here. But if we turn that area light back on, you can see how that affects our scene. I think I might turn my area light down to 200 something a little bit more subtle. And as you can see, the lighting alone is gonna drastically affect the way that everything looks. Right now we're at a very, very intense depth of field. Um, and I think this is it. I think I'm gonna call it on this. I think it looks good. I don't wanna spend too much time on it. Blender almost crashed like five times. But again, we took an image texture. We took an image, turned it into a displacement texture. We did that basically twice. We did it with a bump node in the shader editor. We added some water drops with a glass um, shader on them. And I think I'm ready to render. I think this is looking really good. We've done the real-time compositing. We know what this thing is gonna look like. Let me go ahead and set up my render. I'm gonna do a 200% render of 1920 by 1080. So that's gonna be, I think, is that 4K? I'm pretty sure it is. Samples, we're gonna do a thousand. We did a thousand samples. We're gonna do optics denoising. Max bounces, we have those set up. We should be good to go. I'm gonna go to solid view. I'm gonna click on render, or sorry, F12 to render. Give this a second. Really curious to see how long this is gonna take. Now keep in mind right now, this is not the final result. This is before compositing. So as it renders right now, it's just gonna render out like our base image and then it's gonna apply all the compositing to that. So this right here is not the final result. We still have to go through the compositing step. Right now, there's about three minutes left on the render. Um, I am going to go ahead and wait this out and answer any comments that I have on my live stream. Um, this is looking pretty good, though. You can see the fibers right here. Now, the texture is not perfect, but you can see like these little fibers, these like plant fibers. Now, this is just really cool because you can really do your research and you can go ahead and figure out the actual density of the fibers on the leaves. Guys, if you put a little bit of extra time into the detail work, you can get really far in Blender. Um, and I think this is what separates a good Blender artist from a, a bad Blender artist, or maybe someone who's just starting out, is they don't put the, the time and research into like the little details. Could I have spent more time on this? Absolutely I could. I could spend five days on this, and it would get better every single day. I would, I would set it to rest at night, sleep on it, wake up with new ideas, come back, work on it some more, improve it some more. Every single day, just add another step or another level of um, intricacy and detail to this. I could probably get to the get this to the point where you could not be able to distinguish this from a photograph. Did I do that today? I don't think so, but I do think it looks damn good for the amount of time we spent on it. Again, um, even like things like this, like I'm actually noticing now this could probably be smoothed out, so I think I might have to can't, I, I'll, I'll let this render through 
but when, once this is done, um, I might have to go back and see, like I'm noticing now that I look at this, these jagged edges on this water drop, I didn't notice that before because I didn't, I wasn't that far zoomed in, but like something like this, you would definitely want to take a look at before you complete your render. Um, again, though, this is coming out pretty damn good for like the amount of time we spent on it. It could be better. It could be far better. Um, this, some people might consider this completely amateur work and I, I might agree with them because I only spent a couple of hours on it. But again, this is kind of what you get for the amount of time you spend on it. Um, these plant fibers could probably be improved, but overall, like I'm pretty happy with the result. Some of these uh, water drops are a little repetitive, like these two look very similar. So you could probably spend a little more time sculpting them. I basically showed you what you need to know to create this. Um, and what's really cool is you, you can create, now you know you can create your own textures with images. So you can take any image, apply it to a plane with a displacement modifier, and you're going to get a really good result. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this tutorial. I'll probably go back and smooth this out and re-render, but overall with a thousand samples at a 4K resolution, this image is coming out fantastic. Um, there's a lot of texture here. I think it's very clear that this is a leaf you could spend a lot more time modeling it. You could you could spend time doing more research on textures. You could create your own um, procedural texture for a leaf. Uh, probably you probably want to start with like a Voronoi texture or something like that, and then you could add another bump on top of that with a mix shader with uh, for these like veiny parts, like where 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 the leaf gets cut up into big sections. I mean, you could really plan this thing out and make this perfect. Um, this render is almost done and I wanna see it through because I wanna see that compositing kick in at the end here. Now again, the total render time has been about three minutes. Three, uh, It's almost at four minutes. We'll probably be getting close, it's almost done here. Okay, so we're about to be done and that was three minutes and 50 seconds and then there you go, the real time compositing, sorry, the not so real time compositing just kicked in and it looks really good. So we have our lens distortion, we have our saturation increase, uh, exposure adjustment, brightness contrast, um, and that looks really, really nice. So that is kind of your completed render there. I'm not gonna go too much into detail about like what else you can do in compositing, but that is your result. I think it looks really good. Um, you, could, you could spend all day on this, guys. You could, you could really, really get into this stuff and make this even more detailed. Again, a lot of the stuff, a lot of the most important stuff in Blender that you're going to be using is like lighting, uh, texturing, like materials, like as long as those things are on point, you're gonna get a good quality render. And I think this turned out fantastic. So I'm gonna cut the tutorial here. Guys, have a fantastic day. I hope you learned something. I hope this was enjoyable to watch. Um, and I hope that you got some value out of this. I'm really excited about these tutorials I've been putting out lately because I've been trying to go really in depth into detail about what I'm doing in Blender to achieve these results. Everything you're seeing is completely from scratch. There's basically zero plan that, go, that goes into these tutorials. I just go for it. And I feel like a lot of people appreciate that because most people do these very quick edits with quick cuts. There's not, there, there's a lot of information, but it's so fast that it's kind of hard to follow. So I'm showing you in real time my actual process. So I hope you appreciate that. If you don't, um, you know, go find somebody who does tutorials a different method, like a different way, but it's a lot easier for me to put out more tutorials when I don't edit them. This is just the raw take. There's no editing involved. I just upload as is. So I hope you appreciate that style and you're okay with that style. Again, this is your result. Um, I will go back and smooth this out. But until then, guys, um, I'll probably post this result on my Instagram eventually when I'm do fully done with that. Um, have a great day. Check out the Discord. Check out the Patreon. This file will be available on Patreon as well as all of the past tutorial files. There's like 100 different folders I have with tutorial files available for you guys. Um, and then also check out the TikTok. And then I have some assets on Gumroad that you guys can download as well. There's like a free crystal shader on there as well. So... We have a lot going on with the YouTube right now. We're growing fast. Uh, people are starting to subscribe, so I'm kind of being able to grow my com community on YouTube and Discord and Instagram. Try my best to communicate with all you guys and answer your questions. If you have any about this tutorial, drop them down below. I'm losing my breath talking. I think I've been talking for the past hour and a half. Have a great day, guys. I will see you in the next tutorial.